Chris Dickerson makes his way in as the first batter of our ball game with as if almost on cue. A lot of bright sunshine now coming down upon the field here at Harbor Park. Dickerson and Dino and Haig, one, two, three in manager Dean Trainer's batting order. The Indians at 43 and 31 this year, five games up at the IL West, second best record in the entire league. So Yoon into his wind, and here is the first pitch of the night. It's on the way, and it's low for ball one. As we get things started, a left to right breeze blowing out towards the shock top party deck. Could help the left-handed hitters that pull something down the line. Here comes the 1-0 offering, swung on line drive at a center that falls down for a base hit to Chris Dickerson off a multi-hit game last night. Gets this one started with a soft line drive to center field here tonight. The shortstop, number two, Robert Andino. So Dickerson aboard. He's also a definite threat to run, leading the ball club and stolen bases this season. He's on, and here's another former Tide in the shortstop, Robert Andino, who saw a six-game hitting streak come to an end last night. And the pitch on the way is a strike here from Yoon. 75 degrees here at game time. A little bit on the muggy side with the rain we had last night and the overcast conditions throughout a good portion of the day, but we've not seen any rain, and it's absolutely beautiful right now. Here's the rock of the 0-1, bounced up the middle, might be a pair. DeJesus goes to Weeks, the return throw to first in time for a double play. Great job by Weeks. He was taken out on a hard slide by Dickerson, but still delivered on the money and in time to Wallace at first base. Nicely handled up there. Ball was hit kind of slowly, and DeJesus had to wait for a proper bounce and uh, thought that might uh, preclude getting the double play, but it didn't. And Dickerson is not your prototypical little leadoff guy. He's kind of a big body sliding yeah. in there hard on a small guy like Weeks, but he took the slide, took a tumble after making the throw, but did so perfectly for the double play. Now Matt Haig is up, and he takes ball one high. Haig, the designated hitter and the league leader, and runs batted in. 50 RBIs here basically midway through the year. Pitch home up and away. It is a definite rarity, especially in this day and age, to see a player threaten 100 RBIs at a minor league season. Doesn't happen very often anymore. Here comes the 2-0. He's taking. There's a strike. And typically a guy on that kind of a pace is either going to be called up or in some way, shape, or form not hang around long enough to get 100. Here's the 2-1 from Yoon. Taking is Hague, and that one close but missing for ball three. It is Marine Night here at the ballpark. We have the Marine Band out just as we were coming on the air tonight performing, including our national anthem. They did a wonderful job. 3-1 pitch, swinging a weak bouncing ball by third, charging great short hop by Lombardozzi. The throw on the run, and he gets him. Lombardozzi, not wanting to risk staying back for the big hop, came in at a beautiful short hop play by Lombardozzi for a 5-3 put out. So a nice start for the Tides defensively. As the Indians are done, no runs, one hit, nobody left. We played half a frame. Indianapolis nothing. The Tides about to take their first swings when we come back on ESPN Radio 94.1. Now the right-hander, Sukmin Yoon, ready to work. Speaking of home runs, they've been a bit of an issue for Yoon. He's a guy who's not overpowering and is around the strike zone a lot, so he's given up some home runs. Pitch on the way to Morrell is strike one. Morrell was 0 for 4 last night. He was actually responsible for six outs in those four at-bats. As the pitch is low, Morrell hitting it to not one, but two double plays last evening. Right-handed batter with just a 214 average. Pitch from Yoon, swing and a miss, he's late on that one. So one and two. Pitch was only at 83 miles an hour and Morrell was still behind it. Probably that Yoon change up. And the next pitch, swing and a miss, chased one low and away and goes down in a hurry on strikes. First came for Yoon, and with one away, first baseman Chris McGinnis makes his way up. He had a swell night last night. 
<laughs> he wore what we like to call the golden sombrero. Four strikeouts in a game for Chris McGinnis. And in just four at bats. Pitch home, and that one floats in at 70 miles an hour for a strike. And get us a left-handed hitter, a 255 hitter for the year with five home runs, 26 batted in. And Yoon's pitch. There's the fastball at 91, punched foul off to the left side. I'll tell you, the way he changes speeds, I mean, for going from 70 to 91 is completely confusing to hitters. Yeah, it looks like Yoon throws that change up at a lot of different speeds. You can see some guys, maybe the change up's always 80, 82, but it seems like Yoon will throw it anywhere from you know, 70 to 84. Here comes the 0-2, off speed, bounce to the right side, Yoon back into his left, reaching over his head to pull it in and makes the throw onto Wallace. Nice job fielding his position by Yoon. If that ball gets over his head, not sure if Weeks can make that play. Uh, you don't see very many times when a pitcher uh, feels a ball like 15, 20 feet behind the mound. Yeah. And behind it and slightly to the second base side and kind of reaching back and behind his head. Very well done by Hume. So two outs in the inning is catcher Nevin Ashley. He comes up to bat here. First time we've seen Ashley did not play last night. Although it's a name we're certainly familiar with around the IL. The pitch to Ashley is up. Saw him out in Louisville last year. Well, I thought you were familiar because Ashley Furniture is one of our big sponsors. They indeed are. And the pitch on the way, low and away, but we still can't give any kind of concessions here to Nevin Ashley, despite no. our fond affection for the name. Two balls, no strikes. We'll let him go for three instead of over four. Okay. Ashley Furniture, proud sponsor of the Ashley Furniture Luxury Suite here at Harbor Park. Swing a bouncing ball, third base side. It'll be grabbed by the shortstop, a jump throw on the run by DeJesus. And Nevin Ashley he is taken care of. One, two, three, they go. Behind Yoon, he's faced six batters through two innings, and we've played an inning and a half. one nothing tied on ESPN Radio 94.1. Brian Arters, please report to the Whitfield Information Center on the ground course behind home plate. Leading off for the Indians, number 41, Mel Relhaas. Mel Rojas takes ball one, and the next pitch of the inning is up and away from Sukmin Yoon. And it's a two and nothing count for Rojas with the tides on top by a pair here, scoring a run on the Piguero homer in the first and an unearned run in the second inning. Pitch here on the way, and that's in for a strike on Rojas. Mel Rojas, the switch hitting right fielder. Mel Rojas Jr., to be exact. And the two on pitch. He swings at it, knocks it back over the screen out of play. As Rojas' dad, Mel Sr., played 10 years of the major leagues, a pitcher back in the 90s with a couple of different teams, probably best remembered with the Expos. I remember, I think, with the Phillies as well. And here's the 2 2. Swing and a shot through the right side of the infield. So Rojas starts the inning with the second base hit for Indianapolis tonight. So the Rojas aboard, left fielder Jeff Decker comes to bat, and as he does so, it is time for our Why Not Pizza Puzzler. Another chance to win a nice prize from Why Not Pizza. One winner per household per calendar month, so if you want or had anybody in your household win in the month of June, you've got to wait until July, but other than that, get ready to dial at 622-1007. That phone number is 622-1007. Here's you in the pitch. Decker takes outside for a ball. And here's our question tonight. What stadium hosted 
the first Major League Baseball All-Star game. Plain and simple, what stadium hosted the first Major League Baseball All-Star game? Here's a swing and a long, deep, high fly ball by Decker, heading for the bullpen and gone. Jeff Decker takes one deep off Yoon, and just like that, the Indians have tied the game at 2-2. mentioned it last inning or back in the first inning perhaps but Hewn's a guy because he throws strikes and is not overpowering does give up the long ball and that's the team leading 13th he's allowed this year more than double anybody else on the tied staff now Michael Martinez looks at strike one there wasn't a lot of doubt about that one either fourth home run this year by Jeff Decker RBI's 24 and 25 for him. Pagaro went back, but he very quickly just watched. And the ball landing fairly well back in the tight bullpen in right center. Swing and a miss here by Martinez, batting from the left side. Now one ball, two strike count. Well, we've got two of the highest scoring offenses in the entire league getting together in this series. You wouldn't have Known it by last night's 2-1 decision, but it's true. Here's the 1-2. Cut and a miss. Swinging right through and over the top of the changeup. So a nice bounce back after the home run by Yoon, getting the strikeout of Martinez. And that takes us back to the top of the order for Chris Dickerson. Center fielder, number 24, Chris Dickerson. And the Tides entering today with 343 runs scored. Only one behind Columbus for the league lead in Indianapolis, right behind the Tides at 340. So they've got the second and third highest scoring offenses in the entire league matching up here in this series. Here's the pitch on the way. Dickerson, a swing and a fly ball, left field. A step back, now trotting in. Ford Phelps, he's under it for the easy grab and the second out of the inning. And we have a winner on the this Why Not number two, Pizza Puzzler. Robert Gandino. As Jim Newsom of Virginia Beach has called in and correctly given us the answer. Ken to Tommy Newsom, you know. The great old band leader with the uh, on the Tonight Show. Uh-huh. Robert Andino up, and he takes high ball one. And Tommy was always kind of the white guy and he'd fill in when Doc Severinsen yeah. wasn't there. Native of Portsmouth, I believe. Yep, Craddock High School. And the pitch on the way is low here on Andino. Which does not exist anymore. Yeah. Right there on a George Washington Highway, I believe it uh -huh. is. Yeah. yeah, the old Craddock Admirals. Mm -hmm. Here comes the 2-0 oh, and that one's Anthony's in for a strike. Andino hit into a double play his first time up. You're going to be older than you've been telling me. <laughs> I have been telling you. I remember calling high school football games out at Craddock. Swing a ground ball to third to his left. Gobbled up by Lombardozzi. The throw across, and he gets Andino. So after the two-run home run, Goon bounces back and retires three in succession. But the game now tied on the blast by Jeff Decker. And as we head to the bottom half of the third, we're tied up at 2-2. By the way, we'll give you the answer to the puzzler in a little while and another chance to win tomorrow afternoon. We're deadlocked at 2-2, and we're back in a moment on ESPN Radio 94.1. RBIs in his last 15 games. Getting into a new Ford for great value is always easy. So stop by and check out the low finances, incredible lease rates, big cash back, and other deals your local Ford dealer has to offer. We're tied at 2-2. We head for the fourth, and here to tell you all about it, my broadcast partner, Dave Rosenfield. Thank you, Pete. The first pitch was a called strike on the inside. Your pitch just misses count even at a ball on a strike. Is Stuckman Young on for his fourth inning? 2 2 game. Pitch on the way. Just misses a little bit high, I believe. Haig, right hand hitter. 
Big, strong guy. One for four last night. Bounced out to third his first time tonight. Fouls it away. Backing up in the seats. Nice crowd on hand. And people enjoying the pleasant weather. Not nearly as hot as it was the last couple of days. Much more comfortable today. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball, shortstop to Jesus has it. Throws on the first in plenty of time. And Haig is retired. Now Brent Morrell. Morrell started in the White Sox organization. I'm not sure how he got over here. We saw him in Charlotte. He's from one of my old stomping grounds, the wonderful city of Bakersfield, California. Pitch called strike fastball on the outside edge at 38 at 88. Here's the USS Batan missing an A on the scoreboard. Pitch pops him up right field. Figueroa back under there makes the catch. So two outs quickly. And it'll bring on Chris McGinnis. Bounce back to the pitcher on a real fine play by Yoon in the second inning. Ball chopped over his head. Went back, fielded with his back to home plate. Back behind the mound, probably 15 feet behind the mound. Whirled and threw him out at first. McGinnis with four strikeouts last night. So 0 for 5 on the series. Here's a called strike fastball at the knees. Happy 16th birthday to Scott. So when you're coming out, you've got a birthday or any special occasion for a very nominal fun. There's a swing and a miss. Nominal fee. Have your name and birthday wishes, anniversary wishes, divorce wishes, anything you'd like. <laughs> Within reason. Swelled at the plate. And all that money, which is a very nominal, I can't remember, it's $10, $15. $10. Uh, and that goes to the Youth Baseball Fund. So it's for a good cause. Plus you get to see your name up. No balls, two strikes. Line drive, foul, past third base. Whoa, ball person down there made a nice play. Nice play off the carom off the sidewall. I think he's an old billiards player. You got to know your angles. <laughs> the Astros lost to the Rays today, eight to nothing. In the dirt, blocked by Clevenger. Jake Odorizzi, the winner in that game for the Rays. One young pitcher came over in that trade from Kansas City, along with a couple of other people. Line drive up the middle for a base hit. And McGinnis off the snide with a single to center. Not hit exceedingly hard, but Again, placed well. And Dave, you mentioned that performance by Jake Odorizzi today for uh, Tampa Bay. The Rays blanking the Astros. Houston had one hit in the entire game. I'm far did Odorizzi go. He went seven and a third, struck out ten while allowing one hit. They got him, they got Myers, and they got a kid named Montgomery all in one trade. They, they, of course, they gave Kansas City some pretty good people, too. And James they, Shields and... Uh, Shields and Wade, uh, Wade, and Wade Davis. Yeah. Two pretty good pitchers. No balls and a strike. Working to Nevin Ashley. Swing and a miss. McGinnis. Good-sized guy. Not much of a threat to run. He's on at first with two down. In a two-to-two -two game playing in the top of the fourth. Beckett will go against Ross. Dodgers and the Padres will have for 10 tonight on the West Coast. Pitch from you. 
just missed. That looked like a pretty good pitch. A ball and two strikes. Ashley last year with Louisville. Now the backup for Indianapolis, Sanchez, down from Pittsburgh. But <laughs> wonder where that pitch was. Boy, oh boy. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two to two game. Yoon comes to the set position. Looks at first. And pitches. Fouls it away right side. Drifting back and into the seats. You can see some of the fireworks being set up out beyond right field. The two and two pitch once again. Just low, three and two. So now, McGinnis will be off and running. So you always want to, with a runner in scoring, not in scoring position, but in a position to run, you always try to, with two outs, try to make it the decision before the three and two pitch. On inside, he walked him. First walk given up by Yoon. So now runners at first and second with two down for Mel Rojas. Hit a line shot base hit the right field his first time up and scored ahead of Jeff Decker's long home run. Atlanta and Washington. Julio Tehran pitching for Atlanta. The stretch to look at both runners and the pitch. There's soft pitch right down the middle for a strike. Pitch swing and a miss off speed pitch. 0 and 2. It was 0 and 2 to the last hitter. And he came back and worked the walk. Runners at first and second with two down. Yoon looks at second and bitches high and outside. Athletics beat the Red Sox two to one. Orioles beat the Yankees six to one. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Down on strike. Strikeout number three for Yoon. No runs, a hit. No errors, and they leave a pair. We'll go to the fifth inning, or bottom of the fourth, fourth pardon me. Two to two. Back in the third, the only run scored by the visitors. Knights picked up a run on Peguero's home run. And a unearned run in the second inning. Pitch just outside. Here's Jeff Decker now. Hit a long home run in the back of the bullpen and Knights' bullpen. Rounded foul just outside the line. Rochester beat Buffalo 6-3 to three today. Columbus leading Lehigh Valley. He'll have all the scores and highlights on the Dockside Scoreboard Show tonight. There's a line drive into center field for a base hit by Decker. So he's on at first. Second base Syracuse seven. leads Durham 12 to 1 in the second inning. Goodness me. I wonder how many runs they scored in one inning in that one. They scored one run of the first. They have scored 11 runs in the second, and they are still batting. Whoa. 
That's a big inning. Without a home run. <laughs> Pitch on the way. Bounce back to the short stop. The short, pardon me, right out in front of the plate. Bunted and Clevenger picked it up through the first. But I'm, this is a sacrifice. Center fielder number 24, Chris Dickerson. So down to second goes Jeff Decker. And back to the top of the order now for Chris Dickerson. Clevenger looking over to the dugout. Dave in that Syracuse uh, Durham game, excuse me, Steve Sousa already has four RBIs and Will Rhymes already has three. Wow. And no home runs. They have 12 base hits, two doubles, and 10 singles. Wow. Here's a call strike on the, at the knees on the outside edge. Dickerson singled, first time up, fly to left, his second. Wines and pitches, swing and a miss. Dickerson three for six in the series. Another group here tonight from the American Legion Post in the Bethlehem Lurton Club. Pitch, foul back to the screen. The runner at second, Jeff Decker, pretty big lead. De Jesus came right in behind me, but Yoon came to the plate with the pitch. Had Yoon had something going, they'd have had him picked off. De Jesus, much closer to the bag, pitch on the way. Inside and low. A ball and two strikes. Mariners beat the Royals two to one. Medina over Vargas. Fernando Rodney another save. Look at second. There is the throw to second. Oh my goodness, close play. Jesus put the tag on. Decker slid back in head first. Very close. Bone a step toward left against Dickerson, not looking for him to pull. Pitch in the dirt. Clevenger can't quite make it, and on the third he goes. We're going to call that a wild pitch. Pitch is in the dirt. So now a runner at third with only one down. And a two and two count to Chris Dickerson. Next tied, big left hand hitter. Pitch on the way. Ground ball. Just called it a fair ball. Wallace fields it. Runs to the bag, but in the score is Jeff Decker. So Dickerson gets the job done, gets the run Short home. Stop number two, Robert and Gina. Well, looked like it might well be foul. But the first base umpire, Ian Fazio, said no, it was fair. The end of score, kind of a manufactured run, a single. Went to second on a sacrifice, a wild pitch, and a ground ball. Fly to right, Peguero's there. First short of the warning track, makes the catch, and Dino's retired. But Indianapolis takes the lead. They get a run on one hit. There were no errors, and they leave nobody. We're halfway home, middle of the fifth. It's 3-2, to two, Indianapolis. Big, a couple of bounce outs. Once to third, once to short. He is one for six in the series. Low and inside. Big, strong right-hand hitter. Club leader in RBIs. Ground ball. 
toward the middle to his left to Jesus. Spin throw, got him at first. Nice play. Well hit kind of up the middle. Jesus far to his left. He has a 360 and fires on to Brett Wallace in time to retire. Now Brent Morrell. Now Struck out and fly to right. Brent Morrell. He's made a couple of nice plays at third base as well. Cole strike. Played most of one season with the White Sox. Been back in this league the last couple of years. Just misses one and one. Fouls it back to the net. Ball and two strikes. Yoon has the sign. Misses low and away. Two and two. Chris McGinnis next. Yoon's pitch. Line drive softly falling into right field for a base hit. Big arrow over to pick it up and hold Morrell right there at first. It's Morrell's first hit of the series. Now one four seven. Just a little soft line drive falling in right field. Now Chris McGinnis. He's one for six, had a single his last time. Struck out four times last night. McGinnis, left-hand hitter. We're bone playing him a step around toward left. Infield looking for him, possibly to pull. First pitch is away from him. Yoon pitched high 2-0. Clevenger trots out to the mound. Have a word with Yoon. I don't quite know how they communicate. As Yoon's English is pretty non-existent. And I don't think that Clevenger speaks Korean, but Maybe they have some method of communicating. Morrell leads away at first. Two and no count. There's a call strike. Syracuse leading Durham 12 to 1 and going to the third inning. 11 runs in the second inning for Syracuse. Throw over to first, diving back Morrell. 12 runs in two innings without a home run. Two doubles, the rest all singles. Steve Sousa, four RBIs. Ground ball into right field for a base hit. Hit just to the right of Wallace, or going around to third base is Morrell. And they've got runners on the corners. With one man out. As McGinnis singles for the second consecutive at bat. 29, Nevin Ashley. Already leading three to two, threatening for more. Now Ashley grounded out and walked. Mike Griffin and the interpreter, Justin Yu, going out to talk to Sukmin Yun. Justin Yu, a young man from Los Angeles, California, who does the interpreting for Sukmin Yun, Mike Griffin, and Clevenger. About to talk to the right hander. Conference breaks up. 
And with one down and runners at the corners, he'll face Nevin Ashley and then Mel Rojas. Pittsburgh and the Cubs, it's raining. It's scoreless there. I don't know if they've gotten started or not. I can't tell. Washington leads Atlanta one to nothing. Pitch on the way. Hit ball hit deep to center field. Morbon going back. He won't get it. It's over his head and up against the wall. One run scores. Here comes the second. There'll be a throw to the third base. And he is going to be safe at third with a sliding triple. Nevin Ashley hit that ball dead over the head of Julio Borbon in center field. And two run score. Coming in from third, Brent Morrell. And all the way around from first, Chris McGinnis. As Ashley hits it right at the 400 foot mark. And it's now a five to two game. So now Yoon will face Mel Rojas, left-hand hitter. There's a pitch just inside. Rojas, a single and a strikeout. Yoon looks at third, pitches inside 2-0. Oh. Infield in at the edge of the grass on the left side. Weeks and Brett Wallace a step deeper. It's still a hard hit ground ball. They'll come to the plate. There's 3-0. Pitch is high. So Ashley at third. Two runs already in. He looks and delivers. Ball four, he walks in. Walk number two. Given up by Yoon. And runners now at the corners with still only one out. Starting to see some stirring around in the Tides bullpen. Now Jeff Decker, who's having a good night, a home run and a single, has scored twice. Batting eighth in the lineup. Left hand hitter. Yoon delivers, swing and a miss. Big cut. You look at the runners. This set. Throw over to first. Rojas. Fair lead at first base. Another throw over. No balls and a strike. Decker, the left hand hitter, infield at double play depth, outside and low. Athletics beat the Red Sox, Otero over Mujica. The pitchers in that one. Yoon comes set at the waist and pitches. Ground ball foul. It's off the railing at the tides dug out on first base. Rangers and Angels will meet. Weaver for the Angels, Martinez for the Rangers. A ball and two strikes. Another throw over to first. Yearn trying to keep Rojas close. And enable the guys to maybe turn a double play to get out of the inning with no further damage. Look and the pitch. 
outside two and two. Yoon, who had been going along pretty well, gave up a couple of runs in the third. Indians threatened a little bit in the fourth, left a couple of men on. Scored a run in the fifth. Foul round ball to the third baseman. Hope coming from him. He's out. My goodness. Levenger standing there holding the ball. And the runner at first kept flying all the way around the third base. And the throw to third was late. But Ashley's retired from Lombardozzi to Clevenger. And around the third base on the fielder's choice comes Rojas. Good, good hustle. So now with two down and runners at the corners again. Now Michael Martinez struck out and sacrificed. 0 for 1 on the night. 0 for 4 in the series. Pitch. Call strike. Turned as if to bunt. Didn't. Did not even offer at it. But charging hard from third was Lombardozzi. Pitch on the way, just outside. Young comes set at the waist, looks at first. Line drive, right field, base hit. So Michael Martinez delivers, and it's a 6-2 game. In to score is Rojas. And on to second goes Decker. And here comes Ron Johnson, and that's going to be it for Mr. Yoon. We are going to have a pitching change as Ewan had a tough inning. Four hits in the inning and three runs. We'll tell you about the new pitcher after this timeout. 